Green Rising, my friends. Hey there. What it look like for the most beautiful subscribers in the Milky Way galaxy and edging out towards other galactic systems to overtake them in terms of our just commanding beauty because of the love that we generate. If you're new, I know that may have freaked you out a little bit on that part, but <laughs> come on in. Come on, get on in. Here you can see the ETH is burning a lot past two billion in terms of how much ETH is worth. So if it's sinking in now, Ethereum is what at around well, check here. Is around I was thinking about that. Half a trillion, so about five hundred billion, and we just burnt off two percent, so one one percent, about one percent of Ethereum is gone now. That would have now Ethereum doesn't have a cap. You know, one is not written into the code, it's generated every day, or more can be generated. And but we are now burning more than there uh, are is exerent. We are now and some days we have burned more than was created that day. And, you know, we're eventually going to start making it deflationary over time. And that's why big people like Bitcoin, because deflationary meaning. There's a, a only, it's only a certain amount. And when it's all there, then you're just going to go back and forth. You're not going to create more of it. And if people lose access to theirs, then everyone loses access to it. So you have to be very careful with your coins. 2.5 trillion market cap you see here bitcoin is at sixty thousand, and it's just um, coiling to go higher this is none of this is financial advice medical advice or advice on any scale of any measure period advice about cybersecurity, operational security this is completely entertainment laugh at the or don't laugh choose what you want to do in this world at the human being in front of you. So Bitcoin at 60,434, Ethereum at 4,130, Binance at 477, Cardano 214, Solana has had a nice run the past couple of days since I've seen you. 200 bucks, Polkadot doing well as well with the parachains coming out, part of its decentralized processes. $44.85. Dogecoin had a nice couple of days at $0.25. Cents. And boy, Shiba Inu has been doing this thing. And we're going to discuss a lot of ways to make extra money with Shiba. Like it's a whole Shiba. This is why it's going to do better than Dogecoin, unfortunately. I'm sorry if you know you completely like a doged out. But Shiba Inu, by running on an Ethereum system and it's going to create its own um, chain based upon Ethereum, has its own marketplace where you can swap coins back and forth. You can stake your Shiba and get not only Shiba, but different tokens. And it's a whole, I'm going to show you this DeFi stuff is, I don't even know how to describe it, but it's basically, if, if this is what the private banks and the Federal Reserve are doing to make money, I understand why it's confusing to the average human being or the average person as they're taught how money works and it makes them ungodly seams of money because you basically lend your money and then get back tons way more percentage than you gave. For example, this is Shiba Swap. Oh, well, it is what it is. And if you're in Shiba shop, if you bury Shiv, which is Shiba itself, you can get APR 224%. If you bury Bone, which is a a coin that's built for Shiba Swap, which is, you know, this decentralized exchange built on Shiba, you or Leash, they got Bone and Leash in the in the Shiba ecosystem that by Staking various tokens, you can earn bone and leash, or you can buy bone and leash, and then pair it with other things. I'm going to explain all this at some point, but anyway, look, you can get 1,200 percent API, and it, it varies on a daily basis, but it's usually above the several hundred percent on these for for, for days as long as I've seen. Um, 
But right now, you can get 1,281% if you bury bone. So, but so no wonder why in Shiba, you know, it's a lot of talk of it possibly going on Robin Hood soon, which because Dogecoin is making so much money for, I'm sure they're going to add it and probably sooner rather than later. Dogecoin has been such a, a revenue generator for Robin Hood. They would be not the most intelligent individuals to not add Shiba Inu. And then they will see, really see, because a lot of people were not on Coinbase, but want to get into Shiba. When it sits on Robin Hood, they will buy it, but they won't own Shiba because Robin Hood will still just be numbers on the screen to them. If you can't take the coins off to your own wallet, you don't own it. And that, and be having my Shiba and the way I can control it, I have it in a MetaMask wallet, and that's why I'm able to stake it on that platform. And then also have Leash and Bone and Ethereum in pairs earning liquidity elsewhere. It's a lot of products on that platform. They have NFTs that came off that platform. So Shiba is going to do really well. Now, it's a story, and I'm going to do it in probably a couple of days where they talk about it'll get up to $1.20. I'm like, please. <laughs> There's a quadrillion Shiba created. And I think they burned down like 41% of it. So there's still 59, I'm sorry, 590 trillion Shiba tokens out there. So if each one is a dollar, that's $590 trillion that's being accounted for with Shiba <laughs> in and of itself. $590,000. That's all the money in the world that we know of. And probably even a lot of the shadow money that we don't. Not all, but some. Anyway, stock market did really well today. Uh, not super well. Everything was positive, but Tesla's been on a tear lately. It's now above $1,000. Very good news if you've been investing in Tesla. You see that Amazon almost went up 2%. I mean, everything in terms, not every everything. You can see how this red here, but a lot of the tech stocks and the futuristic kind of things we think of here, but none of this is financial advice, but the innovation and technology sphere is starting to turn around. Not the SPACs. The SPACs have been down horribly, and that's just because they got to show and prove. So it would be a time if you look and see a company that came out within the past year as a special purpose acquisition company, a SPAC, that has a more technological innovation orient and just haven't had the time yet to put their product out, not being time because they are down tremendously from when they um, first uh, debuted or merged with their um, the the I won't say parent corporation, but the you know the first initial blank blank check blank company blank company organization. So I mean, that's what the spec basically is to me. So with all of that here, we about that positivity. Positivity being if there's someone that inspires you in life looking inside yourself to reach down to your fingers and type into don't mind if i do <laughs> this was a b you saw the other day type into the on this page into the comment section and forward this video to that person and say hey look what i wrote about you out here on these internets and be happy about yourself and then you can jump and kick your heels and walk off with your day one of the, one of those ding Get that sound going. Jumping into it, Bitcoin sets new record. This was a couple of days old, as you can see, almost a week at this point when I've pulled this up. But I wanted to touch on some of the things they were talking about, the how well that first ETF did last week, which is a week ago. Yeah, how, how well that first ETO, um, BITO did, almost had the... Probably the second highest. They'll say in here that it launched the the great the, the some one of the largest um, openings, but it was actually like the second to a Blackstone. Yeah, second second largest there for an ETF. And I think now the, the the new articles are saying that oh, after recalculating, it was the largest. But we, we what did you expect? And also back and I man, look, I wish I don't think I mentioned it. I think it came out the other day. I don't think I mentioned it in the video. Maybe I did. But B K K A T is I think I did mention that several weeks ago. And, I, and if you listen to me, you got in on it. It went from like eight bucks, eight something, close a little bit uh, less than nine, to 
30, 30 today. I don't know where it's at now. And um, it was 50, 51 over to going into the weekend and after hour trading because it is the Wall Street's Wall Street Dow Jones company cryptocurrency company and they signed a deal to work with mastercard to start pushing their mastercard with their clients so it's crazy but anyway so big giant uh of course it's a, a huge market for cryptocurrencies and quote-unquote legitimate funds and so but this is futures and futures are not based on bitcoin specifically so they can trade either above and below and i don't know if this talks about it or a different article talks about it yeah, 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 okay, yeah. Futures, if you never traded futures, the key difference that the returns of... I'll start and read for this and we'll go through slowly if we ne if necessary. If you have never traded futures or owned a futures-based ETF, so it's based not based on the actual product, it's based on speculation of how much it's going to be. So if we were saying an ETF of uh, baseball cards, that's not say baseball, right? That's so cliche. Let's say... Football cards. No, we're not going to say that. <laughs> so we're doing, we're going to stick with cards and we're going to go with, we're going to go with a personal, an IPL. Like, let's go with a something. I was going to say uh, garbage pail kid. <laughs> no. Anyway, not going to waste all day with this. Let's just say basketball cards. Make it quickly. We have our basketball cards. And so we have, you know, people have sets and the individuals and the market for them is a thousand dollars. And everybody say, OK, we agree. This is the ETF. The market for the entire thing is about a thousand. The ETF runs at a hundred dollars per saying it represents a tenth of the market, blah, blah, blah. Everybody's saying agree. OK, now a futures ones be like, oh, OK, they a thousand. Oh, we go speculate. That's go up to fifteen hundred next year. So our price would be one hundred and fifty dollars compared to a hundred because and that's what futures is. They start that that fast talk. So. If you've never traded futures or owned a futures-based ETF, the key difference is that the returns of BTC futures contracts don't mirror the returns of the underlying Bitcoin market price longer term. Two key terms the novice investor might need to know are contango and backwardation. The former is a condition, contango, where the price future price is above the expected future spot price. So it's inflated compared to where you think it's going to be. And backwardation, while the latter refers to the reverse, the spot price is above the futures price. So is is underestimating where the um, price is going to be in the future. Taken together, it means investors will sometimes gain or lose value longer term by owning a futures based BTC ETF, even while the price of Bitcoin won't fluctuate the same way. In other words, it won't be correlated necessarily in the long term with short term decisions. So people may not be too happy with what they think they bought into with this, thinking that it completely mirrors Bitcoin. So if the prices of Bitcoin go through the roof, but they underestimated it with the ETF, then the ETF won't follow along. And then people will be like, but what happened? I thought we'll be making more money like that. Oh, get this out of here. Get this out of here. Ah. Anyway, so that's that's the long and short of that. And um, so and it's going to be and other ETFs have dropped since then. And they're going to be more a lot of other BTF, ETF future, future Bitcoin, Bitcoin future ETFs. And eventually we'll get some spot ones. And that's when it will really get interesting because they will have to then purchase Bitcoin to mirror Bitcoin. And Grayscale has an advantage with everybody with that, of course. Why a CryptoPunks owner turned down 9.5 million buckaroonies in Ethereum for, you know, we have to change our thinking. You know, I saw somebody who did a video the other day, uh, one of my uh, contemporaries here on this platform. I'm fancy now. That talked about taking $500 to... A hundred thousand dollars in Ethereum. Like, oh, I'm gonna show you how to flip five hundred to a hundred K in NFTs. And I said, you should write that baby boy as point one Ethereum to twenty five Ethereum. Cause that's how we need to start thinking that we're not turning this, we're not worried about how much it is in dollars. Dollars need to worry about how much it is in us. As if we are 
bits of the blockchain. But hey, maybe part of we are part of everything. CryptoPunks is the most valuable NFT collection with a starting price nearly 400k worth of ETH on the secondary market. So that's about 100 ETH and dozens of sales over the 1 million mark to date. One owner could have cashed in big recently with a $9.5 million for now. Part of this is you don't know how serious it was because the bid came from. So an individual said, hey, I would never sell my crypto punk, no matter how much somebody offered me. And Buddy offered him 200. I'm sorry, 2,500 ETH for it. And that at the present time is 9.5 million. Now, when each Ethereum is worth 10,000. You know, that's 25 million. So, I mean, that's what, you know, that's why, that's what got these people jacked up. Remember, we talked about the Mount Gox instance where it's like, no, 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 pay me in how much Bitcoin I lost, not how much the dollar equivalent was at that moment in time. Get out of here with that. Anyway. So, Buddy turned it down, of course, because he has a whole brand built around his, his, uh, with his crypto punk. This one right here with the glasses and um, with the uh, 3D glasses and the cigarette. So it's understandable. And, and, you know, obviously he is sitting pretty at baseline because, you know, if this was somebody, I'm sure, um, you know, this would be like a, it wouldn't be much of a, a squid game question for any, uh, any of us, not any, but, you know, probably a lot of us where you'd be like, mm, yeah, I'll go ahead and take that payout. <laughs> He'd accept all that and walk away. Uh, with, with with no quorums on that, you know, call that a come up. So, but he turned it down because you know this guy probably is well off, and so yeah, co-founder of NFT smart contract developer Manifold. You know, he also said I think in here that he he had actually uh, built a significant brand around his crypto punk, including to his business. So, you know, what are you going to do? But just say, hey, nice and thank you for it, but it's not for sale. Some things are not for sale. Now we're going to take a trip down the wild side in the future for a little bit. And I run through this, I'm not going to keep you too long. Generative AI, autonomic systems, and hyper, -automa hyper automation and more are the top tech trends. So really quickly and why this is going to be super awesome going forward, a couple things. Next, uh, The next thing we talk about is really getting crazy but generative ai you see a lot in um nft art but also there it, you can see it in uh writing there's a lot of articles being written screenplays plays all types of things but also software designs these things giving ai opening the reins for it to try to decide what ways we haven't seen to want to make our life better that's going to come up with a lot of ideas over time tasks like software co-creation drug development facilitation targeted marketing can be augmented using generative ai possibility that generative ai is used for scams fraud forgery and political dis disinformation and they estimated that'll be about 10 percent of all data produced by generative ai by 2025 up from one less than one percent today so you know we talked about this with the deep fake synthetic media how that's going to look. They also talk about cloud native platforms. So now that we built the cloud, there's going to be software that just live on the cloud as opposed to in a operating system that it was was, you know, on a some type of desktop laptop creation. I'm not too technical, more technical people have a better sense of it. But these cloud native platforms sound, you know, and a lot of that is what's been happening and what you expect. You build it and they will come. So. It's going to provide, because they use the core capabilities of cloud computing to provide scalable and elastic IT-related capabilities as a service to technology creators using internet technologies. That's awesome. Now, this is, was, whew. autonomic systems were also featured on the list. Noting that autonomic behavior has already made itself known through recent deployments in complex security environments. But in the longer term, talking about drones and, um, and warfare, that's what's been happening with it. We talked about the drones and between um, Armenia and 
I always butcher it. What's the name? Azerbaijan. As Azerbaijan? I'm butchering it. But those companies in, in Israel has been using it as well. The drones were using very complex artificial intelligence and making their own decisions and carrying out uh, plans based on what they felt was best at that moment. So what are autonomic systems? Robot drones, manufacturing machines, and smart spaces describe systems as self-managing physical or software systems that learn from their environment. Unlike automated or even autonomous systems, autonomic systems, it all sounds like it's the same thing, but it's all three different things. Automated is I give you specific tasks, you will go do that. Autonomous is you're giving rules about the world and you go through it following these rules. And if anything, you will just stop, you know. You won't act if you don't have an, a, a, a scenario you can play that that you've already tested it against. And that's what these they're doing what Tesla's doing for their computers and these robots. So we're talking about with these deep neural nets. Autonomic systems is OK. I did some. Wow. That was my reaction. I learned from it. I don't do it again or I do it again. It is learning on its own without updates from another source saying hey this is the new updated list of scenarios it's learning in that moment now you know it goes in a hierarchy you you give these systems certain tasks that they do then you make them autonomous where they give in certain parameters to act in and then you make them autonomic where they learn from their environment and the things they do and upload that back to make the autonomous systems even better for the other systems it's Kind of go with the, the if you've ever heard, like, I think it's called the, um, is it the 100 monkey, the 100 monkey theory, where if you teach 100 monkeys, then all the other monkeys will learn that skill. Kind of like that, but imagine that magnified at the speed of technology now with, you know, on a daily basis, all the, all the robots upload what they learned that day, different from all the other different robots, create a neural net, everybody learns and download it. <laughs> It's, it sounds scary now that I think about it, but okay, this we move on. So that's what autonomic systems are, and they are and they are coming. So the other big things they're looking at is going to be decision intelligence, AI helping you make decisions. You know, this it depends at what level we get this down to for us. Composable applications able to throw together applications from probably different um, different sources to stack them together. Hyper automation hyper automation which is what we're doing with we talked about that they're gonna as much as they possible to get rid of construction labor work driving all of that they are trying privacy enhancing computation i like the sound of that Cybersecurity mesh we need that ai engineering total experience sound like vr stuff rounded out the list of tech trends coming so things to think about Next up, this CAD, which is Computer Aided Design Program, can design new organisms. And this breaks down to, they sound like, I don't know if this is, they're making it sound like they have this thing, or they're working, or they're in the midst of building it, or have, a, um, uh, what am I thinking, not a, a model? I'm thinking a model. A prototype, several prototypes, or they're, they're on uh, some model of this where, this machine can basically rewrite genome. Genome is our DNA. So they, they can take your DNA and say, okay, these are the parts that we want to change in there. Anything we want to change in there. Go in there, change things, put it back. It, it's So, yeah, applications for the CAD software extend far beyond medicine throughout the uh, burgeoning field of synthetic biology, which involves redesigning organisms to give them new abilities. For example, we envision users designing solutions for bio manufacturing. It's possible that a society could that society could reduce its reliance on patrol, uh, patrol, uh, patrol. Why am I butchering that word in my head right now? Thanks to microorganisms that produce, oh, and if you don't know, I butcher words and I'm wrong about a lot of stuff. So it may sound interesting stuff. Go double check for yourself. Always double check. Never trust nobody. Petroleum. Thanks to microorganisms that produce valuable chemicals and materials. And to aid the fight against climate change, users could design microorganisms that ingest and lock up carbon. That'd be sweet. So they, look, these people sound, it sounds crazy. It sounds, it sounds a bit crazy. I'm not going to lie. Where is it I was reading that? Okay. Okay. 
it's a lot to go through. I'm not going to read all of it. They're talking about using... So, computer-aided design has been used to design um, electronics and cars and mechanical systems for years now, where you basically able to use the computer to model what you're doing before you try to build it. And right now it's at light speed of what we're doing. You know, this is where they supposedly the Air Force designed a jet and flew it within a year, the, a sixth generation fighter. So now they're doing it for living systems where we're able to, and, you know, along with kind of companies like AlphaFo, which is a division of Alphabet, which is Google on intense purpose for most people. It's the parent company, Alphabet, have DeepMind. And DeepMind, they've created this computer software that is able to predict by both going both directions. How a protein is folded, what is its um DNA string that makes that, which we we could never do for years, or what a DNA string would look like as a folded protein. You know, having that being able to do that is game changing. Because you can now see, okay, this is a normal, you know, a normal cell versus the abnormal um, cell or uh, cell part. And you can see the proteins are different. Now we can go back and figure out, okay, we can fold it out and figure out, okay, where are the parts at? And how did that make the problem that we see? So using technology in 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 the software that they have or in the system they have for like AlphaFold would make what they're doing with this CAD possible, which is so I'm just da, 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 no, it's back here. It's back here. It's Maybe I was doing this, but someone I was going to change it. Talk about CRISPR here, but you know they said it's even like CRISPR is good, but this is going to take it to the next program. I'm sorry, to the next level. Our first version of the CAD software will feature a user-friendly graphical interface, enabling researchers to upload a species genome. So, say we take a a, a bat or a virus. I don't know why we want to do that, but maybe we were curious. I should be joke like that. Upload its genome, so any species, bacteria, virus, more complex organism, make thousands of edits throughout the genome, go through, brrr, make a lot of edits, output a file that can go directly to a DNA synthesis company for manufacture. This is what they're building. And they is that, yeah, if you're not, you not doing it, then they. <laughs> the platform will also enable design, design sharing, an important feature. So, okay. Now, they do have some safeguards built in. Let me see if I can find what that is. And I like with that, where every user is going to have to um, um, have like a, 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 you know, it almost sounds like, and they probably will at some point use like a blockchain identification. Um, they talk about all the companies they're dealing with twist and none of this is financial advice. We said a million times agent technologies, twist, bioscience, and script, uh, license automation. You may have heard, you know, some of these ANSA biotechnologies, DNA script, but these are companies they're working with, but I wanted to blah, 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 blah. They're talking about how to go build for high school students, which sounds good and all, but they're also making a, uh, a, a their their part is the grand challenge adopted by is the ultra safe cell project to, aims to create a human cell line as resistant to viral infection. But that's not what I want to show you. Oh, maybe I did go. No, they they had a really good. Okay, here. Okay, so yeah, we also keep a permanent record of redesigned genomes for tracing and tracking purposes. This record will serve as a unique identifier for each new genome, and will enable proper attribution to further encourage sharing and collaboration. So hopefully, they keep an eye on somebody not making no crazy stuff. Because listen, if you've been able to give this power, no telling what you can do. Being able to go in now and using artificial intelligence to Computer aided design, and, and you know, there's also another sweet thing they said there that it's going to be built. Uh, biosafety is a top priority. With uh, there are also um, several levels of safety checks into the system. Each user authentication, 
biosecurity checked up on the import and export of any sequence. So, you know, this is what I'm saying. We want to make sure that things are going to be safe. But they also had a, um, oh, what was the, uh, what I was reading. This just talks about how they, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, this is that. That built into the software is going to be, you're not going to be able to build something that would not exist, that wouldn't function. I, was, I shouldn't say exist, a lot of stuff ain't going to exist. It's, it does not exist presently will be created anew uh but they'll just like in cad design for a car or something you can't put like a wheel on top and say the car's gonna flip out run and roll you know there's certain physics that have to be followed and there are going to be laws of biology that the computer will you know show you like green red like you know oh that's not gonna work that's not gonna we gotta change that you gotta fix that and give you ideas like oh wait, maybe you want to try this and that goes into that generative AI that we talked about, you know, uh, autonomic systems that can see what you're doing and think for themselves. So this is going as, and this is not financial advice, but this is advice you need to think about. As much money as you think the Internet is worth, not just, I'm talking about Amazon, Google, anybody who make money off the Internet. The, the 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 5G the the hardware the software all of that as an economy what is going to happen next with our bodies and medicine and wellness and genetic alteration and that is going to on orders of magnitude dwarf that economy how much is it worth for your health your sanity. How much? How much is that worth? Is it is it worth likes, or is it or or you know, is that way more important to know that you can will be, you know, no telling how long we talking about healthy, uh, and well, looking the way you want to look, and feeling the way you want to feel, please. And you should be feeling that anyway, because with that said, I love you. You love you. God loves us. And that's all that matters.